So, my name is Claudia. And uh, I'm going to talk about what makes a tech hub. So, in other words, what does, I don't know, New York City has that Mexico City hasn't? Or Buenos Aires, or Santiago de Chile, or Lima, Peru. This is exactly what I'm going to be discussing right now. But uh, before that, just to give you a little bit of context. I am from Monterrey, Mexico, which is a beautiful city. And if you don't know where that is, that's in the north of Mexico. It's really near the states. And just so you know, it's the third most important city in Mexico. And technological-wise, it's one of the most developed. So just, just keep that in mind. And uh, now I'm going to take you back a little bit on time to 2014. What was happening in 2014 besides the World Cup? Personally, um, I was just getting out of school. I was getting a computer science degree, and I was also getting my first job in, in, in tech. I was uh, working in this small startup in Monterey, and uh, everything seemed to be doing fine. I was a web developer. I was mostly doing HTML and CSS, but uh, not JavaScript, because apparently I was not that good in JavaScript back then. Unfortunately, you know, I was not that happy. Uh, you know, uh, I had a lot of free periods, and uh, my job was just not that challenging enough. And uh, I was looking for ways to level up my JavaScript uh, skills, because uh, obviously I wanted to, to keep moving forward and grow professionally. So I started thinking, like, what else can I do in order to continue learning? I was already out of school. Uh, so during one of those free periods, uh, I came across this really cool uh, web conference video. And uh, I realized that conferences are an amazing way to continue learning. So I became addicted to conferences. I was just uh, looking to them uh, online. And the next thing to me, the, the, the logical thing to do, was to find meetups in Monterrey, in Mexico. So, you know, I started looking for meetups and I realized something. There are not a lot of meetups going on in Monterrey. Actually, there was just one meetup. It was a JavaScript meetup. And you know, back then, I was not that great in JavaScript. So I wanted to do a CSS talk. I took with the organizers of this uh, JavaScript meetup and told them that I was really interested in uh, creating my own CSS, uh, CSS meetup. And they told me, basically, that there were not a lot of people interested in that. I was uh, kind of discouraged. But uh, either way, I convinced them to do my CSS talk in their JavaScript, uh, JavaScript meetup. And apparently, it went really well. People seemed to like it. They were interested. Uh, I talked uh, with around 15 people. So it went very well. But uh, this whole situation, the fact of trying to create my own uh, CSS meetup and uh, talking about these kind of topics that really interested me, made me realize something. I was missing out a lot of stuff. You know, I follow developers on, 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 on Twitter, and uh, I knew that there were a lot of conferences and events and uh, meetups going on around the world, but just not in Monterrey, or uh, Mexico for that matter. And uh, this brings me to my first point. There is a low community involvement in Mexico. And just to give you a general idea, uh, this is a graph I made, uh, a chart I made from a non-exhaustive list of conferences made by Smashing Magazine, and as you can see, the amount of difference, uh, the, the, the amount of, of conferences going on in Europe or in uh, America is huge compared to the conferences going on in Latin America or Asia or uh, Africa. We have to change that. Basically, what I'm saying is that there are more conferences going on in a single country than in a whole continent. And speaking of which, speaking of conferences, this is a really eye-opener uh, tweet that I saw from uh, Juan Pablo Britica. He's a Colombian developer. And uh, he's saying, basically, a $100, ticket, uh, $100 ticket is 10% of a Colombian developer's monthly income, sometimes even more. Sponsors really help in development nation events. And this brings me to my second point. There are non-competitive salaries for in tech in Mexico. So following the example of Juan Pablo Britica, I did the same thing with the Mexican salary. So basically, the average monthly salary in Mexico is 14,000 Mexican pesos, which is around 745 uh, USA dollars. This is exactly the amount of money that I was earning in that first job in Mexico. And this is before, after I got my raise. So basically, a $100 ticket for a conference that, to be quite honest, that's a cheap ticket, is 13% uh, of a Mexican developer's monthly income. So if you, have, uh, if, if you remember, there are not a lot of conferences going on in Mexico. You have to add the expenses of plane tickets, of accommodation, and also the time. So you're basically spending a lot of time and money. And to be quite honest, for a developer uh, working in Mexico, this is just, uh, it's, it's just way too much money that we cannot afford to spend. What else? Basically, in Mexico, infrastructure is expensive. And what I mean by this is that the internet bill is really expensive. 
And just to give you a, a general idea, uh, in, this, uh, in these maps, basically faster connectivity speeds are represented by warmer colors, and more expensive internet bills are represented by bigger circles. Bigger circles. So basically, if you make the comparison between the circles going on in Mexico and, well, also in America, compared to the ones going in Europe and, and also in Paris, you will realize that in America, basically, we're paying more for slower service. So, you know, after thinking about all of these things, about uh, how, how, how expensive is the internet and that there are not a lot of conferences or meetups going on over there, uh, it was a no-brainer for me. I knew that it, I either had to move to, I don't know, to the States or to Europe in order to, con to keep continuing growing professionally. And uh, before I left Mexico, I did a second talk with only uh, eight people in a Google developer uh, group meetup. Basically, they saw me in my first meetup and they really liked it. And uh, they told me to, to do my CSS meetup in a Google uh, meetup. So the thing is that it's not that people are not interested in, in hearing what I have to say. It's basically, I feel like there are people that are not, uh, that are lazy and that they, don't ju they just don't want to, cre to keep continuing creating uh, new, new meetups or they're just lazy. They don't want to continue organizing stuff. So basically, after a lot of, of uh, administration help from France, sorry, uh, I finally moved to Paris. And it was the most amazing thing ever, because suddenly I had access to a lot of resources. And this is why I'm telling you that you are really, really lucky to be living in France. You have meetups. You know, since my arrival in Paris, I have attended Paris.js, React.js, Paris, Meter Paris, Node.js. Basically, I'm subscribed to more than 25 different meetups in Paris going on. Do you remember that in, in Monterrey I only had one? Here I have so many options, and it's amazing. You have events in Paris. You have things like Node School for web development. With Node School is an amazing initiative. Basically, it's a one-day workshop in which developers gather around, and uh, they learn Node, they learn anything JavaScript related, and there are professors that are going to be helping you over there. This is the kind of initiatives that we need to bring back to Mexico, to Latin America. We don't have stuff like that. There is also Not Together, which is a traveling one-day workshop as well to, to learn Node. I was there as well, obviously. I had to profit from these things. I don't have them in, uh, in, in Mexico. It's, it's, it's amazing. And conferences, as I told you before, conferences are an amazing way to continue learning, and not only that, also to meet new developers and to create an amazing network of friends. So I've been attending a lot of conferences lately. Basically, I've been to 11 conferences as an attendee and one conference as a speaker. And as I told you before, when I was back in Mexico and uh, I was looking for meetups and creating my own ones, I also wanted to become a speaker myself. And, you know, I, I daydreamed so much about becoming a speaker when I was in Mexico because I want to see myself represented more often. I want more Latino people in the stage. I want more women in the stage. I want non-English speak, uh, speakers pe uh, people on the stage. So finally, in uh, May 13, I fulfilled that dream. I gave my first technical talk uh, in JavaScript uh, in JSConf Budapest. It was one of the most amazing things ever for me. And all of this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for diversity scholarships. Basically, uh, in September, I went to Berlin, uh, to JSConf Europe in Berlin, uh, th thanks to a, schol a scholarship diversity, a diversity scholarship. And it was amazing, because over there, it was the first conference that I ever attended, and I met so many developers from around the world, so a lot of Americans, uh, uh, Germans, and the thing is that this was a really life-changing experience, because I met this amazing girl uh, that I told her that, you know, uh, I really want to become a speaker, and, and she told me that I, I could do it. She really encouraged me to get on the stage, to just go for it, because to be quite honest, I didn't feel that I was good enough in order to be on a stage. Like, why would people need to will, will hear me, you know? And uh, it was amazing. She encouraged me, and if it, really, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been uh, in, in Budapest in the first, in the first place. And uh, I really like this quote by Yuna Kravitz, and it says, uh, scholarships aren't just about increasing diversity numbers or financial assistance, they can change an attendant's life. And they do. They change mine. And what it's, uh, what it's amazing about this is that if I had stayed in Mexico, I wouldn't have had access to these kind of things. Now that I've been able to profit from conference and meetup and everything, I, I really want to spread the word and I want to bring all of these things back to Latin America. And basically with conferences and meetup, what we're doing is we're creating a, a network of people supporting each other. Because uh, 
in my case, it was uh, this developer that I met in Berlin that uh, supported me and encouraged me to become a speaker. And the great thing is that last, last month I was in Scotland, yes, and I also met uh, a lot of people, a lot of amazing people. And I met this girl. And this time, it was my time to crunch her to become a speaker. She was telling me that she was in really interested in, in being in that community and that she also wanted to be a, a speaker as well. And I told her, uh, you can do it. You can do it, uh, go ahead, you don't have to be an expert. If you have something to share, something that you want other people to know, just go ahead. Don't be afraid of it. And it was amazing. Last week she told me that she did her first talk in a meetup in London. So this is what we need to keep uh, promoting. We have to create this, uh, this network of people, of encouraging each other. Basically sometimes people are afraid of, of being in a stage, they just need a little push. push. They just need a little uh, of encouragement. And this is the kind of environments that we have to provide. Basically, we have to learn from others and we have to, uh, to help others learn. It's all about giving and receiving. And basically, this is what this network is about. And sorry for my lame French, but uh, c'est tous ensemble que notre intelligence collective est la plus forte. This is what we have to encourage. So back to my first question. What makes a tech hub? You know, a tech hub is made by highly motivated, community-driven people. It's by promoting and organizing these get-togethers with people that want to share ideas and knowledge that we're ju just going to keep moving for forward. So what can we do? You know, as I told you before, I want to see myself more rep uh, represented more often. I want to see more girls. I want to see more, uh, more Latinos. So someone has to do the first step. This is my eighth at attempt to, to encourage other Latino girls to, to speak up. So I'm doing the first step, and I really hope I can make other girls also get on the stage as well. And you know, we cannot change internet bills, we cannot change uh, salaries, but we can help creating this, uh, a bigger community. We can help creating meetups, uh, conferences like this one. And you know, Latin America is huge. It's a huge opportunity over there and we need a lot of help. We need uh, people uh, that really want to, to help uh, create these conferences over there and spread everything, spread all of these amazing ideas like Not Together, like Not School, and just bring them back over there because we need a lot of help. So as I told you, spread the world, the word, get involved, and don't forget to give back. And why not? I would really love creating a, our own JSConf Mexico. And if anybody would like helping me, uh, I would be gladly accepting this, uh, this help. And this is a quote uh, from a book that I read uh, not, uh, not long ago. And then again, sorry for my French. Uh, les ingrédients, la dynamique et les talents sont là. Il faut juste que cette culture participative, que j'ai appelée la culture de corps, se diffuse. So it's what I'm saying. Uh, we have to spread these uh, ideas to all over the world. And obviously, I'm representing the Latino community. So obviously, I want to see Mex Mexico having more conferences, more meetups, blah, blah. But of course, uh, this is. Uh, this is something that we have to encourage everywhere, in Asia, in Africa. It's, uh, to be quite honest, here in Europe and in America, you are so blessed that you already have these things. Maybe you don't uh, realize that uh, you just assume that uh, it's the way that it should be, but uh, it's not. In Mexico, I had one meetup, as I, as I told you before, and um, to be quite honest, I have improved and I have uh, advanced so much prof professionally just by attending meetups, just by creating a network, just by uh, learning from these, uh, these conferences that I've been attending. So really, if uh, you, uh, you want to help uh, organize meetups and conferences, then I, that would be really, really, really amazing. And that's all from me. Thank you.